Autophagy is a degradative pathway in which cytoplasmic proteins and organelles are enclosed within a double-membraned autophagosome, which then fuses with late endosomes and lysosomes to become an acidic, degradative compartment called an autolysosome. As Sandy Mayday, a postdoc in Erika Holtzbauer's lab at the University of Pennsylvania, explains, autophagy is particularly important in neurons. Previous work has shown that neuron-specific disruption of autophagy is sufficient to cause neuron cell death. But little is known about the dynamics of autophagosomes in primary neurons. So we set out to determine the mechanisms of biogenesis and maturation of these organelles along the axon and primary neurons. Mayday and colleagues isolated sensory neurons from transgenic mice expressing a GFP-tagged version of the autophagosome marker LC3. In culture, these neurons extend long neurites from the cell body. Mayday et al. found that autophagosomes initially formed at the distal tips of these axons. What we saw is GFPLC3 positive puncta appearing in the distal neurite, and they would grow progressively into ring-like structures of approximately 800 nanometers in diameter, a typical size and structure reported for autophagosomes. Mayday et al. only saw autophagosomes form at the distal tips and not along the length of neuronal axons. Photobleaching experiments revealed that nascent autophagosomes continuously recruit GFP-LC3 from the cytosol, whereas fully formed autophagosomes are stable structures that fail to recover their fluorescence after bleaching. The autophagosomes at the distal tip exhibit primarily a bidirectional type of motility and occasionally we could see autophagosomes exiting from this bidirectional pool and then they underwent very robust and primarily retrograde transport towards the cell body. The retrograde movement of autophagosomes along the axon depended on the minus N directed microtubule motor dynein. We did dual color by cell imaging of the LC3 along with the neuron-specific dynein intermediate chain DIC1B, and we found that DIC1B co-migrated along with autophagosomes in the axons of the sensory neurons. We also overexpressed a dominant negative, CC1, to disrupt dynein dynactin function, and that arrested autophagosome motility. Despite moving predominantly toward the minus ends of microtubules, autophagosomes in the axon also carried the plus end directed motors kinesin 1 and kinesin 2 a finding that surprised Erica Holtzbauer. They move so robustly retrograde as they're moving along the axon for hundreds of microns, it's a little surprising in a way that kinesins are going along for the ride, but both the live cell imaging and the purification show very clearly that they're there, so likely they're downregulated, and in Sandy's model, she presumes that it's by folding to turn off the kinesins and allow dining to transport the autophagosome almost exclusively. The researchers then turned their attention to the cargo carried by autophagosomes along the axon. Dual colour imaging showed that the organelles contained fragments of mitochondria and the cytosolic proteins ubiquitin and SOD1G93A. This latter protein is an aggregation-prone mutant of superoxide dismutase linked to the neurodegenerative disease ALS. Mayday et al. found that autophagosome dynamics were unaffected by the presence of SOD1 aggregates. And that was surprising for two reasons. The first is we had previously shown that expression of mutant sod alters other vesicular motility in the same neuronal type, but it did not at all affect the movement of the autophagosomes in this assay. And the other surprising thing was we envisioned that there might be some upregulation of the process to do a better job of cleaning out the aggregates from the axon, but we saw no upregulation of the process. To degrade cargo like SOD1, autophagosomes must mature by fusing with acidic late endosomes and lysosomes. To examine this process in neurons, Mayday et al. looked at the dynamics of LC3 and the late endosome lysosome marker LAMP1. While most of the distal autophagosomes were negative for this marker, the autophagosomes within the axon were positive for LAMP1. So this suggested to us that as they exit from this distal bidirectional pool that they become positive for markers for late endosomes and lysosomes, suggesting that the fusion between autophagosomes and late endosomes lysosomes occurs distally along the axons. Consistent with this idea, 
Lysitracker red, a fluorescent dye that stains acidic organelles, preferentially labelled autophagosomes travelling along the axon. To examine autophagosome maturation further, Mede et al. used a version of LC3 tagged with both GFP and the red fluorescent protein M. cherry. Both fluorophores are active before fusion and acidification, making immature autophagosomes appear yellow in merged images. But the GFP signal is quenched as autophagosomes acidify, so that mature autolysosomes appear exclusively red. And so what we found is that distally, the majority of autophagosomes were positive for both M. cherry and GFP, while proximal to the cell soma, 70% of the LC3 puncta were red only, suggesting that as you near the cell body, you become fully acidified, potentially maturing into an autolysosomal compartment. This final maturation of autophagosomes was accompanied by another change in motility, as red LC3 puncta reverted to bidirectional movements near the cell body. So what we think is happening is that autophagosome biogenesis and maturation is a constitutive process in primary neurons that is spatially and temporally regulated along the axon. Autophagosomes are generated at the neurite tip and they undergo bidirectional motility, we speculate, due to the competing activities of the kinesin and dynein motors. And at some point, there is a shift in motility where we think kinesin becomes inactivated, allowing for very robust retrograde transport that's driven by dynein. And this shift in motility is accompanied by fusion with late endosomes and lysosomes. Autophagosomes then move robustly down the axon towards the cell soma, and they become further acidified as they reach the cell body. Again, this is accompanied by a switch in motility back to a more bidirectional transport characteristic of lysosomes. The researchers think that autophagosomes may move to the cell body as they acidify and degrade their contents in order to efficiently recycle the resulting breakdown products, the cell body being the main site of protein synthesis in neurons. But what do Mede et al. want to investigate next? I think Sandy's most excited about the biogenesis pathway, what's initiating the formation, what are the initial steps, and also the initial cargo engulfment. About 10% of the autophagosomes are positive for mitochondrial markers, and we'd like to know if that's a process that could be upregulated. In addition to that, we also want to look more at the lysosomal fusion, how that is happening and whether that is actually a signal that indicates the switch from a bidirectional to a retrograde type of motility. In the meantime, you can learn more about the formation and maturation of autophagosomes in neurons in the paper by Mayday et al., published in the February 20th, 2012 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology. Thank <laughs> you.